secret and the reason I'm calling it a secret it is because it is hidden to a certain group of people but if you access the keys to that particular secret it is open to you ni kwa sababu kuna watu ambao wamefichwa wasijui ile siri lakini ukisikiza kwa makini wewe utaipokea ile siri anything you find of value is hidden unachopata cha dhamana kimefichwa did you get that gold is not available in your roadside market stalls dhahabu haubadi kule kwa barabara ukipita kwa njia that's why the money that you put inside your bank is safely kept into a vault ile pesa ambayo unapata kwa benki unaficha katika kibeti chako that's why your heart which is the most important organ is covered kept right inside ndio maana roho ambayo ni kiungo chako cha maana sana kimefichwa ndani amen that's why your spirit is deep rooted deep seated because that is an important area of your life ndio maana roho yako imeketi ndani sana ikafichika kwa sababu ni ya muhimu si haba therefore the lord says i'm going to give you some secrets yes wakasema ningependa nikupe siri kadhaa and these secrets must be accessed hii siri lazima ikapatikane it is not going to happen on a sunday morning and attending and going back very sorry to say that haitakuja tu kwa sababu ulikuja kanisani jumapili asubuhi alafu kaondoka la hasha there must be a deliberate methodology of accessing this information lazima kukue na njia maksudi ya wewe kufikia ile siri Hallelujah. Amen. And therefore just today we're going to discuss one more important aspect of this discovery of accessing the mysterious things of God. Lazima basi leo tujifunze kitu siri moja ya jinsi ya kufikia zile siri za Mungu. And for that reason I would ask you to turn to Matthew's Gospel chapter 20. Verse number 1. Mstari wa kwanza. The kingdom of heaven. Ufalme wa mbinguni. Can you all say please the kingdom of heaven? Ufalme wa mbinguni. We are referring now to a kingdom. Sasa tunasema kuhusu ufalme. In a democracy you can vote somebody in and vote somebody out. Mahali kuna uhuru unaweza mchagua mtu ndani na mchagua mwingine asiwe ndani. In a democracy the majority generally wins. Kwa uhuru watu walio wengi wanashinda. In a democracy you own nothing you are only functional in a certain area. Wakati kuna uhuru wewe hauchukui chochote kilikuwe chako unafanya tu kazi kwa muda fulani but in a kingdom lakini kwa ufalme nobody can throw the king out nobody can throw the king in he is forever established hakuna mtu wa kumtoa mfalme na kumuingiza oh, yeye yeah. yako pale milele hallelujah amen number two. cha pili the king of the kingdom owns everything Mfalme wa falme mambo yote na vitu vyote ni vyake. Amen. Amen. That's why if you see kingdoms it is ruled by the king and whatever he says becomes law there's no party to say yes to it veto it or no to it. Mfalme anaongoza ufalme anachokisema ni sheria hakuna wa kukubali ama kupinga. Where the word of a king is there is power says the book of the Mfalme akisema kitu pale kuna nguvu asema bwana wa majeshi. So therefore we are dealing with the kingdom. Basi tunaongea kuhusu ufalme. This is a very important truth. Aya hii ni njia ya maana sana. As long as you see this book as a democracy or rather the kingdom as a democracy we will fail. Tukiangalia ufalme kama demokrasia basi tumeanguka. Because somehow you think oh all the scenario that we see in the world are pointing towards a major downfall of the belief system that we have and therefore we look at these systems and we think that this kingdom will not stand because of the position of the other kingdoms against the kingdom of God. Tukiangalia kama vile ulimwengu ulivyo tutaweza kuwa wakuvunjika moyo na kuona kama falme zingine za ulimwengu zitauangusha ufalme wa Mungu. But the day you have the revelation that we are talking about a kingdom and the king is none other than the Jesus Christ, the king of kings and the lord of lords, there's a totally new dimension of understanding. Basi utakapoelewa kwamba Mungu amekaa katika chikiti cha enzi, ni bwana mabona na Mungu wa miungu utathibitisha imani yako ndani ya Mungu. Amen. I don't know what situation you're going through right now. Sijuna pitia hali gani? But Jesus is the king over that situation. Yesu ni mfalme wa ile hali. It's a good time to lift your hands and say praise the Lord. Sema Bwana asifiwe. It doesn't matter what government rules, what government reigns in any part of the world. Jesus is still on the throne. 
haijalishi ni serikali gani na ina, ina, inaendelesha kazi ama ni serikali gani na inatawala ina, ina Yesu ndio mfalme That's why the book says in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 I'm just going to give it to you of his kingdom there shall be no end Isaiah 6:9 inasema kwa ufalme wake hakuna mwisho Ah thy throne o God is forever and ever Enzi yako e bwana ni ya milele na milele. So tell somebody we are talking about a kingdom here. Ambia mtu tunasema kuhusu falme. We're not talking about getting somebody in getting somebody out we are talking about a king who rules forever and ever. Atuogei kumchagua mtu na kumtoa mtu mamlakani tunaongea mfalme ambaye anaishi milele. And and this is a mystery. Hii ni siri because the bible says the kingdom of heaven shall be likened. Therefore there's a mystery which is explained. Ufalme wa Mungu unafananishwa basi pale sili nafichuliwa. He likened to 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Inafananishwa na wali wa, na wanawali kumi waliotoa taa zao. In the kingdom it is mandatory that you have an assignment. Basi katika ufalme ah. lazima wewe uwe na majukumu. You cannot say I'm a part of the kingdom and do nothing. Hauwezi kuwa sehemu ya ufalme na haufanyi chochote. You are there explicitly to serve the king. Uko pale kimaksudi ukaweza kutumikia mfalme. Everybody serves the king. Kila mtu anatumikia mfalme. Therefore the Bible says these virgins had a particular assignment. Hawa wana wali kumi wote walikuwa na kazi. So the assignment is to meet the bridegroom. Kazi yao ilikuwa kukutana na yule bwana harusi. That means they have a focus and a vision for something to go forward to. Walikuwa wametazamia na walikuwa na kitu cha kufuata. Kingdom citizens, let me address you. Wacha niwaambie nyinyi kama wana wa ufalme. Are you kingdom citizens? Nyinyi ni wana wa ufalme. I've come as a spokesperson to be addressing the kingdom people this afternoon. Nimekuja kama msemaji mkuu kuwanenea watu wa ufalme. To let you know that the King of Kings the Lord of Lords who I represent wants to let you know and pass this information that it is mandatory that you get a hold of a vision for your life. Anasema kwamba basi bwana mbona falme wa wafalme kwamba lazima ukue na maono juu ya maisha yako. Ah these virgins had an assignment it that is to wait out and wait for the bridegroom to come. Wana wali wale kumi walikuwa na majukumu ya kumgojea bwana harusi aje. Now these are people in the kingdom. Hawa ni watu ndani ya ufalme. But again the Bible makes a clear distinction between two groups of people even in the kingdom. Hata ndani ya ufalme Biblia inasema kuna watu waina mbili. Amen. Amina. Now the point is not whether they are virgins or not virgins. Si kwamba ni wanawali ama sio wanawali. No, the Bible says but 10 virgins. Inasema wana wali kumi. Do you understand that? Unaelewa? See all of them have been pure kept themselves pure undefiled in the world we're not talking about defiled undefiled no 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 we are talking about pure virgins 10 of them wale wanawali walikuwa wamejiweka safi hawakuwa wamechafua wote walikuwa sawa to rephrase the same sentence may i say that they were equally qualified to meet the bridegroom wote walikuwa kiwango kimoja wametoshana na wamehitimu kukutana na bwana harusi but the holy spirit finds it fit to make a differentiation between these two, two groups lakini roho mtakatifu akaona vyema atofautishane hivi vikundi viwili what is the differentiation in the in this in this particular 10 people anatofautishanaje hivi vikundi viwili one was wise mmoja alikuwa wenye hekima and the other was foolish na kikundi kingine kipumbavu did you hear that Unaelewa? Even in the kingdom there are two sets of people. Hata katika ufalme kuna watu wa aina mbili. The definition is about they had a mission in hand, very good. Walikuwa na maono ndiyo. But one were wise, the other was foolish. Lakini kwa kazi yao wengine walikuwa wapumbavu, wengine werevu. Hallelujah. Amen. In verse number 3, mstari wa 3, let us see the distinction between these characteristics of a wise and a foolish set of virgins tuone tofauti ya hawa wanawali those who were foolish took their lamps waliokuwa wapumbavu walichukua taa zao but they had no oil inside them lakini ndani ya taa zao hapakuwa na mafuta you see everybody had a, had, had a lamp all the 10 of them wote kila mtu alikuwa na taa but the characteristic of a foolish 
set of virgins where they did not have oil in their lamps lakini tabia inaodhibitisha ukumbavu wa wale wanawaliwa tano hawakuwa na mafuta ndani ya taa oh listen very carefully please nisikiza kimakini on the outside all the ten look the same pale nje wote wanafanana am i making sense here on the outside everybody looks the same ukiwaangalia nje wote wanafanana they had lamps walikuwa na taa they had a wick sticking out of the lamp wote taa zao zilikuwa na utambi but there's a test which has come to prove foolishness from wisdom lakini kuna majaribu huja ya kudhibitisha ama kutenga walio hekima na wapumbavu okay. on the outside all of us look the same nje tunafanana but there's a test lakini kuna jaribu that test is going to differentiate foolishness from wisdom ile tofauti inadhibitisha wajinga na wenye hekima you see in verse number 4 mstari wa 4 it says the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps inasema basi wenye busara walitoa mafuta katika vyombo vyao pamoja na taa zao the differentiator was oil tofauti ya werevu na wapumbavu ni mafuta oh hallelujah Mm. Now watch this in verse number 5. Mstari wa 5. It says but while the bridegroom was delayed. Hata bwana harusi alipokawia. See that's the test. Hayo ndio majaribu yali. That's the test. Hapo ndio wanajaribiwa. There are certain delays which is definitely and intentionally purposed by God in your life to see and differentiate wisdom from foolishness. Basi kuna kucheleweshwa ambako Mungu kubadilisha maisha yako ili aone kama wewe ni mwerevu ama mjinga. Did you understand that? That's why you can fast and pray the delay is not going to take shorter time because God is causing the delay. Unaweza funga na ukaomba na Mungu asababishe haraka kwa sababu angetaka kimaksudi wawe na kuchelewa. See when God causes something to happen no amount of praying and fasting is going to help you. Mungu akichelewesha kitu hakuna kuvunga na kuomba kutakusaidia. But we need to have the discernment of the Holy Ghost to ensure it is from the Lord or it is not from my foolishness. Lazima kuwe na kupambanua kana kwamba kule kuchelewa kumetoka kwa Mungu ama kwa ujinga. I rest my case when I speak about Jesus intentionally being led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted and tested of the devil. Ninaongea kwa ujasiri nikiona kwa nikisema kwamba shetani ndiye a Mungu ndiye alio Roho Mtakatifu aliongoza Yesu akajaribiwa na shetani It was a deliberate move of the Lord to take Jesus to confront Satan in during that fasting era Ni Mungu alifanya kimaksudi akamuongoza kwa shetani Yesu ili kwamba akajaribiwe There's a delay Kuna kucheleweshwa In delay there are two areas na kucheleweshwa kuna mambo mawili. Let's talk about the delay and talk about timing under the word delay. Timing. Tuongee kuhusu wakati ndani ya kuchelewa. The book of Ephesians 5:16 says, Waefeso 5:16 inasema, Let's read from verse number 15. So I'm starting from 15. See that you walk circumspectly. Ona unatembea ipasavyo, not as fools but as wise. You see the word there? Sio kama wapumbavu lakini wenye hekima. Not as fools sio kama wapumbavu so who's a fool nani mpumbavu a fool is somebody who says the bible says who verse 16 redeeming the time because the days are evil ukikomboa wakati kwa sababu nyakati ni ovu hallelujah the first area of test will be in the area of time wa majaribu wa majaribu yanakuja wakati wakati wetu najaribiwa because the differentiator here wise and foolish virgins was when the bridegroom was delayed they all slumbered and slept majaribu ya hawa wanawali ilikuwa wakati bwana harusi alichelewa wakalala so number one, ya kwanza redeeming time kukomboa wakati if you want to be wise ukitaka kuwa mwenye hekima one of the characteristics is to redeem your time lazima ukajifunza kukomboa wakati that is to make sure that you're doing something constructive towards waiting for the bridegroom ili ukaweza kufanya vitu vya maana ukimgojea bwana harusi Did you understand what I just said? Unaelewa? Don't just live Christian life every Sunday church and just say church without a definitive plan for your life. Please have a destination. Lazima ukue na mahali unaenda unapoishi maisha yako ya Ukristo. Amen. The number two thing in 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 waiting is something called endurance. Cha pili ni uvumilivu unapongojea. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 makes it clear. Waibirania inasema 
since we are surrounded by great cloud of witnesses kwa sababu tumezungukwa na kikundi kikubwa let us lay aside every weight wacha tuondoe basi kila mzigo and the sin that so easily besets us na dhambi ambayo hutuangusha kwa urahisi you see when you are waiting unapongojea there's a weight kuna kungojea oh what should i do why am i so quiet so i must do something your tendency is not to stay still in the presence of god but to do something wewe hauvumilii katika wewe wa Bwana unataka ukafanye vitu you know what happened to these people they waited what? for the bridegroom bridegroom was delayed wakati bwana harusi wa kimngojea alichelewa and later when he came on the scene they were perturbed because the foolish people did not have the oil they could have purchased the oil during that period but they were sleeping wakati wa kungojea pale ndio wangenunua mafuta lakini licha ya kununua mafuta wao walilala so the three things which the lord will develop during that waiting period vile vitu mungu anajenga ule wakati wa kungojea is to give you an access to wisdom as how to take care of your time ni akupee hekima ya vipi unatumia wakati wako and number two, he's going to give you access as how to be enduring and not you know lose faith and just run haywire but towards your destination atakufundisha jinsi ya kulinda imani yako ukiwa unangojea wakati wa bwana the next thing he's going to give you is what is called perseverance ikingine atakupea ni kukuwa na mtazamo verse 2 of the same chapter says mstari wa pili unasema looking to jesus the author and the finisher of my faith ukimtazama yesu mwanzilishi wa imani yako who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despised the shame kwa furaha ya wokovu uliowekwa ndani yake alifuata msalaba na kukataa aibu it is perseverance ni kutazama mtazamo oh i'm speaking about something very important this afternoon ninaongea kitu cha maana dhuri ya leo what do you do when you're waiting ukingojea unafanya nini what do you do when you when nothing seems to be happening around you wakati hakuna kitu kinaonekana kizuri unafanya nini remember be careful with the way you use time kwa mwangalifu unavyotumia wakati if i had the time i will speak to you about what is called sharpen your axe kama ningekuwa na wakati ningekwambia jinsi ya kutia makali shoka that's the time you need to sharpen your skills hiyo ndio wakati wa kutia makali vipawa vyako oh are you understanding what i'm saying ndio number 2 is endurance your endurance is being tested be perfectly still and get an endure that waiting period which may probably crush you wacha ukue na uwezo wa kuvumilia kwa ule wakati wa mateso ili unapotoka pale utaweza kuwa na uvumilivu kwa wakati wako utakao hitaji nguvu haleluya haleluya some of you are waiting i know some of you are waiting najua wengine mnangojea you know my, my my life i had a prophecy over my life that i'm going to get into full time ministry mimi nilikuwa nimepewa nilikuwa nimetabiriwa kwamba nitaingia katika kuhudumu kuhudumia Mungu kila wakati i was very excited nilikuwa na furaha when i began to know the lord and i said wow god is calling me into full time ministry nikaza kumjua mungu nikajua mungu anaenda nikae kuhubiri kila wakati it came to pass after 23 years niliweza kufanya vile baada ya miaka 20 na mitatu there was a lot of temptation for me to jump the gun hakukuwa na majaribu ya kuruka haraka amen amen but the lord kept telling me hang on hang on right time possible it's all on bona kaniambia ka hapo ka hapo wakati ujapo three words timing timing hold on relax wakati 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 you see if you can destroy the good thing by wrong, wrong timing unaweza haribu kitu kizuri kwa sababu ya kuingia kwa muda usiofaa you understand so these three words timing endurance perseverance timing right so you need to learn to stay still in the presence of god jifunze kutulia katika wepo wa bwana did you understand what i just said hallelujah Now watch this please let's go on back to the the, the gospel of Matthew 25. Ah turudi Mathayo 25. It says in verse 6. Inasema hivi msari wa 6. And at midnight. Na katikati usiku wa 8. And at midnight. Usiku wa 8. Midnight is the most unlikely time that you're expecting things to happen. Usiku wa 8 ndio wakati ya utegemee chochote kitendeke. Paul and Silas were in jail. Paulo na Silo walikuwa jela. That's found in Acts chapter 16. Let's not turn there. Gerezani pale. The Bible says and suddenly there was an earthquake. Alafu pakawa na mtetemko wa ardhi. I like that word suddenly. Nothing is ile ile. You're not expecting nothing to happen. How to give chochote? Suddenly God shows up. Mara moja Mungu anaonekana. Suddenly miracles happen. Mara moja mujiza unaonekana. Suddenly 
mara moja a woman with the issue of blood touched the hem of his garment anapoguza pindi la yesu mwanamke ule suddenly mara moja power healed her body nguvu zinamuingia mm suddenly the bible says biblia inasema mara moja ah and all these virgins there was a sound that says the bridegroom is coming pakawa na sauti nasema bwana harusi yuaja and all verse number 7 all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps na wote wale 10 wakaamka na kuwasha taa zao all wote all wote you see all these tests were done inside nobody knows on the outside they're still looking the same right at this point of time hata wakati huo anapowasha mataa wote wanafanana ah behold the bridegroom is coming go out to meet him Bwana harusi amefika enendeni mkamfua mkamlete They rose and trimmed their lamps Wakainuka na kuwasha taa zao Please listen very carefully Nisikize kimaki All of them had wicks Wote walikuwa na utambi But only five had oil Lakini watano walikuwa na mafuta Did you understand that You look on the outside everybody's got a wick as well no oil five no oil but the wick Kila mtu ako na tambi lakini hakuna mafuta Do you know that the wick can burn for some time as well? You like the wick it burns for some time? Hata wakati hata kama hauna mafuta unaweza washa ile tambi kwa muda fulani. It burns. Ina inawaka kwa muda fulani. But it cannot sustain. Lakini haiwezi kaa sana. Because there's no oil. Kwa sababu hamna mafuta. Hallelujah. Hmm. Verse number 8. Mstari wa 8. And the foolish said to the wise. Wale wapumbavu wakawaambia wenye busara. My brother I pray you'll be wise. Kuwa mwenye busara. Oh did you understand what I just said? Umelewa. My heart desires that we can become wise people that the foolish things will ask and speak to the wise. Communication is easy when you are wise because the foolish will look up to you and ask you questions. Ukiwa mwenye busara ni vyema sana kwa sababu wabumbavu watakuja na kukuuliza maswali. You know, it's interesting that the Pharaoh looked at Joseph and said, "Joseph, I'm going to hand you everything." Pa Pharaoh alimwangalia Musa akamwambia Musa nitakupia yote. Only in the throne am I bigger than you. Kitu ambacho sitakupa ni mamlaka. Everything is yours. Lakini enzi yote nimekupa vitu vyote nimekupa. I'm just a rubber seal. Mimi ni wakutia tu muhuri. You understand that? Be wise. Kuwa mwenye busara. Because the world will come and looking for answers. Ulimwangu utakuja kutafuta majibu. Yesterday I made a mention and said let your let, let let please have fruit so that the world can come to the knowledge of your fruit. Nikasema wewe zaa matunda ili ulimwengu ukija ukakule kwa matunda yako. Listen listen verse number 8. Mstari wa 8. The foolish said to the wise give us some of your oil why for our lamps are going out. Tupeni mafuta yenu kwa sababu taa zetu zinazimia. But the wise answered saying no lest there should be not enough oil for us and you but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves verse number verse number 9. Lakini wale wenye busara wakawajibu wakisema sivyo hatutatosha sisi na nyinyi afadhali shikeni njia mwende kwa wauzao mkajinunulie <laughs> now they went to buy wakaenda kununua that means they had money walikuwa na pesa am i right inamaanisha walikuwa na pesa they went to buy means they had money inamaanisha walikuwa na pesa kwa sababu walienda kununua may i say suggest this afternoon wisdom is better than money Hekima ni bora kuliko pesa. Hallelujah. Amen. A lot of money is not going to solve your problem. Siko maanisha pesa haitatatua shida yako. You must have wisdom to sustain that money that comes into your hands. Unahitaji hekima ili ukipata pesa zikusaidie. So please as God like Solomon as Lord give me an understanding heart. Ambia Bwana kama vile Suleimani alivyosema nipe moyo wa kuelewa. Don't ask for money without wisdom. Usiombe pesa bila hekima. Do you understand what I just said? Dio. They had the money but no wisdom. The Bible calls them fools. Walikuwa na pesa bila hekima, kwa hivyo walikuwa wabumbavu Biblia inawaita. And they went to the buy, the bridegroom came and the Bible says and the door was shut. Walipoenda kununua, Bwana harusi akaingia milango ikafungwa. You understood? Unaelewa? Okay, now I'm going to give you the meaning of what it means. Wacha nikupe maana ya nini neno. This is access to mystery. Okay listen very carefully. Hapa ni njia ya kupata siri. What is the lamp? Ta ni nini? What is the lamp? 
Ta ni nini? All right. Turn with me to this book of Psalm chapter 119. Zaburi 105. Zaburi 119. Psalm 119. Zaburi 119. It's going to be up on the screen and please let's read it all together at the count of 3. Tusome pamoja. All right, look at the screen. Let's do it together, please. 1 2 3, let's go. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Thy word is a lamp. Neno lako ni taa. Thy word is a lamp. Neno lako ni taa. Thy word is a lamp. Neno lako ni ta. Thy word Neno lako is a lamp. Listen, ni ta. Carefully. Listen carefully. Nisikize. There is a distinction here. Kuna kutenganishwa hapa. Please even in the book of Genesis which you're not going to get in there. Hata hata kitabu cha mwanzo. The Bible says the earth was formless and there was void. Ulimwengu ulikuwa bila sura na ulikuwa mtupu. Genesis chapter 1 verses 2. And the darkness was upon the face of the deep. Na giza ilijaa kufunika. And the Bible says and the spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the waters. Lakini roho wa Bwana alitetema juu ya maji. The spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Roho wa Bwana alikuwa anatetema juu ya maji. And then the Lord said let there be light. Bwana akasema na pawe nuru. And there was light. Na pakawa nuru. Now listen very carefully. Nisikize if the lamp is the word, roho wa Bwana kama ni neno, the oil must be the Holy Spirit. Mafuta yalikuwa roho mtakatifu. No many of us this is where the key is. Now many of us preach the word which is good praise the Lord. Wengi tunafunza neno Bwana asifiwe and we do not we lack the anointing on the word which is the oil. Tunakosa upako juu ya neno ambao ni mafuta. That's why your preaching of scripture people like it but it's not impacting anybody. Ndio maana watu wanapenda unachofunza lakini hawabadilishwi. They say it's a good message. Wanasema ni ujumbe mzuri. No but I believe in impacting messages. Lakini amini ujumbe ambao unaachilia nguvu. This is like the foolish people who just had the lamp but no oil. Hawa ni kama wapumbavu ambao wanamtaa bila mafuta. Listen to me please. Nisikize. Even when the earth was formless. Hata wakati ulimwengu haukuwa na sura. Before the Lord can speak and say let there be light. Kabla Bwana akanene nuru. The spirit of the Lord hovered over the face. Roho wa Bwana alitua juu ya maji. True power is there's a mixture of the anointed word and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Kwa hivyo kuna nguvu juu ya neno lililopakwa na upako wa Roho Mtakatifu. You understand this life will never be the same again. Ukielewa hii maisha yako yanabadilika. You know anybody can preach a message by looking at the concordance and taking three verses from the Bible? Kila mtu anaweza angalia vile maandiko watu wengine wamechambua achukue mistari mitatu wakahubiri. You can be very eloquent and pick up three verses and preach a very good message. Unaweza ubiri mahubiri mazuri kutoka kwa mistari mitatu. But we are talking about impacting lives. Lakini maisha yatabadilikishwaje? Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit. Roho mtakatifu The Bible says Biblia sema that this book that you're holding called the Bible the Bible itself Biblia yenyewe inasema the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 Timotheo wa 2:16 Let's just get it up on the screen and I want you to read it together please Tuangalie pale tuseme kwa pamoja 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 Timotheo wa 2 mstari wa amlango wa 3 mstari wa Amen He talks about the efficacy of the power of God's word Inaongea kuhusu wema wa neno la Bwana 1 2 3 let's read All scripture is God breathed. Maandiko ah. yote yametiwa pimu na Mungu. <clears throat> you see that is the secret. Hapo ndio siri lipo. Do you understand that? That is the secret. Siri iko pale. It is God breathed. Ni Mungu ametia pumu. So for you to understand it again must be God breathed. Kama utalielewa itabidi Mungu apumue. If you remove the God breathed part ukiondoa pumu ya Mungu it is just good sayings ni maneno mazuri it is just some important truths but it is not going to impact nobody ni misemo mizuri lakini haibadilishi mtu the difference between the wise and the foolish was just that the foolish did not have oil tofauti ya wenye busara na wapumbavu ni kwamba wapumbavu hawako na mafuta but if you have the light and the oil lakini ukiwa na nuru na mwanga you are able to access the bridegroom utaweza kufikia bwana harusi lift your hands and say hallelujah nyosha mikono yako sema hallelujah lord i have to access the bridegroom baba lazima nimfikie bwana harusi 
I may just have the word. Naweza kuwa tuna neno. But all scripture was God breathed. Lakini maandiko yetu yalipunguliwa na Bwana. And therefore without the Holy Ghost upon my anointing upon my life. Hataji upako wa Bwana roho wa Roho Mtakatifu maisha ni Bwana. The words that I speak will be just mere words. Maneno ambayo nitayanena bila Roho Mtakatifu yatakuwa maneno tu. But I need to be in the spirit. Lakini hataji kunena ndani ya roho. To access the word. Ili nifikie neno. And then the, these wise virgins access the presence of the bridegroom. Alafu wenye busara hawa wakamfikia bwana harusi. Are you understanding this? Nataka uelewe haya. This is a, this is beautiful. Hii ni mzuri sana. Spirit 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 we will blow up. Roho 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 ata ata atafanya vitu vifanyike. You understand you may have all the oil you have. Ukiwa na mafuta it's not going to bring light. Mafuta peke yake hayaleti nuru. Am I right? You have oil. Yes, I have the anointing. Hallelujah. Una upako ndio. Power power everywhere power. Nguvu nguvu kila mahali nguvu. That's not what we are here for. Hatuko hapa kupokea ile. We are not here to become a circus producing power and have certain kinds of activity happening. Hatukuji hapa kufanya vituko tuachilie nguvu vitu fulani vifanyike. We are here to access the bridegroom. Tuko hapa tumpate bwana harusi. And so anointing and anointing and anointing without the word. Upako 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 bila neno. You will blow up. Utapanda tu. Word word word. Neno neno neno. Without the Holy Spirit. Bila Roho Mtakatifu. You will crack up. Wewe utakatika. But the anointing of the word. Lakini upako wa neno. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. Na upako wa Roho Mtakatifu. You will grow up. Utamkua. Amen. Amen. Was it helpful? Imekusaidia